Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez back again. Let's talk about those brand new or relatively new printers from Canon, the Pro 200 and the 300. Now, they were introduced and presumably inks were improved on them. They added a few features, but I really don't see for us refillers a need to actually switch to those printers. If you're an OEM user, by all means, and maybe you're generating a little bit of money from your prints, then by all means update to those models. But let's explore what the options are for us refillers. So Pro 100s, Pro 10s, there are resetters for them. I have them right here. They allow you to reset those chips, whether you choose to do the whole complete setup ones like I recommend you do or not. You can still reset the chips. You still maintain that ink level indication on your driver. So as you print, you know pretty much exactly how full or how empty your cartridges are becoming. But the problem is this. For the Pro 200, even though it is an identical cartridge to these right here, well, it's missing one component. It is missing the optical prism that these CLI 42 cartridges have the Pro 10 cartridges are basically I believe identical to the Pro 300 cartridges now these we refill blindly we put them on a scale we take the cap off after we have reset the chip add ink directly on top of that sponge and we wait for it to reach about a 32 gram weight it could be a little bit less it could be a little bit more it depends and so with these however you modify the cartridge so that you can inject ink directly into the liquid chamber you can reset these and just add ink of course you need to have a clip on otherwise you will lose ink out of the port but nevertheless you just add ink visually you see exactly this one's a little bit low i need to add a little bit more ink it should be about 80 percent from the top so, you know, you have a little bit of a gap, an air gap, not quite touching that plug, if you can see that. Now, the problem with the Pro 200 cartridges is that even though they are physically pretty much identical, they have been made opaque. You cannot see through that wall to know how well is my sponge absorbing that ink? How high is my liquid chamber? You have no clue. So the only option that I would suggest, otherwise it is just a totally blind process and I would not recommend that to anyone. I definitely would not want to try that myself. So there is a way that you can achieve at least a little bit of security. You get a set of these cartridges. You have them flushed. Now you're going to have to remove the chips carefully and transfer the CLI, I believe it's 65, from the Pro 200 to these transparent cartridges. The reason you do that, even though you cannot reset those chips, is to allow you to be able to use them on your printer under one condition, and that is disabling that chip. I don't know exactly what the process for that is. I have not attempted to do that on even a Pro 100 chip. So, you know, at least now that you have a chip from the corresponding matching color but one that is programmed for the pro 200 it will identify that it is a yellow cartridge or a magenta cartridge you just cannot reset it so you have to disable it precision colors has a process listed on their website that shows you how to proceed to do that from that point onward you have to basically check pretty much frequent printer like i suggest you should be you need to check your cartridges pretty much constantly. Remember what that does? The minute you remove one cartridge to check, let's just say that you figure out that your gray cartridge is the one that most frequently has to be refilled. Well, that's the one I would check. And of course, in order for you to know this, 
you would have to have gone through a couple of OEM cartridge sets to know what the routine is. Which color runs out first? It is dependent on your images, what the predominance of color happens to be, but most likely gray tends to go quicker, used up quicker than the other main colors like yellow, magenta, cyan. So remove the gray, take a look at it. If this level is getting down pretty low, I would go ahead and refill all eight of them at once. Remember, once you have disabled the chips, you will no longer have any physical ink level indication on your driver. It'll just be blank and you have to physically check your cartridges. Every time you do that, however, say you do that and you do not have to top them off. I would top them off regardless because if you put the cartridge back in, say you have half a chamber still left, it will run a purge cycle. All eight cartridges lose a little bit of ink that goes into the waste ink pads. And then finally, maybe a week later, you have to then replace all eight of them. Well, what good did that do? You might as well just top everything off. Say, once you figure out, and this is where practice comes into play, once you figure out when does that gray cartridge, if that's the one that gets used up quicker than the others, when does that gray cartridge with my printing routine, my frequency or infrequency of printing, when do I reach a point where I better top everything off? And then every two weeks, three weeks, whatever it happens to be, top everything off. That's what I have to do on my Epson XP 15,000. Every two to three weeks, I have to top everything off. I have no clue how much ink is actually in any of those cartridges unless I weigh them. So I just systematically just top everything off. I'm running a chipless firmware. That means that my levels, instead of being empty constantly, indication-wise, they are always indicated as being full. So that's a little bit different. Now let's talk about the 300. Yeah, the same thing applies, except you have no clue. The only way to know is to take the cartridge out and weigh it. A full cartridge without this clip on a scale, a gram scale, it's about 31 and a half, 32 grams. So remember, you can put about 14 to 50 ml of ink in there. So you can sort of figure out what an empty cartridge would be. And by gosh, you don't want to go empty. You never want to do that, okay? That is harmful to the printhead. So you want to catch it, get into a schedule, create a spreadsheet, if you will, that you schedule every two weeks, top everything off. Unfortunately, every two weeks you will be running a purge cycle because the minute you do a change, whether it's one or in this case, 10 of them, you will run a purge cycle. So you might as well do all at once. Again, remember, your levels are going to show up as empty because you disable all the chips. Keep that in mind. You no longer have a warning sign. There is no, there is no sensor system like the Pro 1000 allows you to have that will warn you hey, top me off now. No, there is no such thing. So you need to get into a schedule. So those of you who are chomping at the bit to get a 200 and a 300, and yet you think you're going to refill easily, I hate to tell you that that is not the case. It's just a little bit more involved. It is not saying that you cannot do it. It just takes a little bit more careful thinking and planning. All right, that is it for now. Thank you so much for listening and of course as always don't forget to subscribe share and like happy printing everyone and bye bye